Today is the release of Targacon 2024 exclusives. And although quite a bit of them are pretty trash, there are some that are absolutely straight fire. So I thought for today's video, I would rank these Targacon exclusives from the worst to the absolute best. And mind you, as I'm recording this, it is the day prior to the release, so I won't have the official glam shots. And there's a chance that I may miss some realistically, so if there so happens to be one that's confirmed and that none of the dirt sheet pages like disc trackers and Funko Finders posted about it, then just comment it down below and I'll just mention where I would rank it realistically. Let's get right to it. So the worst exclusive, in my opinion, is the 10-inch Stitch with Ukulele from Lilo and Stitch. One thing I hate more than a bunch of Stitch Pops is doing those pops again, but in the 10 inch form. Already 10 inch pops aren't that popular because they are just so damn expensive, especially with the price increase recently. Up next would be the 10 inch Umbreon from Pokemon. Although I do hate the 10 inch Pokemon pops, I think that it actually makes more sense than the 10 inch Stitch, especially because I believe that the actual size of a Pokemon would be the size of what a 10 inch pop would be compared to the actual size of a human being so at least if let's say you were at a comic con and you're doing let's say like an ash ketchum cosplay that if you brought a 10 inch pokemon funko pop with you as kind of like your pokemon for your cosplay outfit then it definitely would make sense next up would be the diamond collection hello kitty in birthday cake one thing i hate just as much as a bunch of 10 inch pops is the diamond collection pops especially when you look at a pop like this and it's just completely covered in glitter honestly you're just better off getting the regular version of this next up is the lounge fly sonic the hedgehog bag normally i would put lounge fly bags near the bottom considering that i would never purchase one they're too damn expensive because they are a premium bag and the fact that most bags if i tried to wear them i would break the straps off because they're just tiny backpacks but i do like the simplistic design of this bag considering that it is just Sonic the Hedgehog himself. His face is on the top part and his stomach is on the bottom part. So I do appreciate it a little more than just the 10 inch pops. Next up would be the Stephen Curry for the NBA lineup. This pop is a little meh. I mean, we've seen a lot of Stephen Curry pops with the Golden State jersey. I'm not exactly sure which this version is intended to, whether it's like an all-star game or something like that, because the jersey color is quite different from the regular colors of the Golden State Warriors. But but I'm just not really a fan of it since I don't concentrate on the NBA lineup that much. And the next ones I'll mention back to back are both the Black Light Eddie Munson and the Black Light 2 pack of Robin and Steve. I thought I would add this here considering that although once again I hate the idea of just adding specifications to Funko Pops that already exist, I do see the aspect of how Blacklight would make sense for a show like Stranger Things. And I specifically put it as Eddie and then the two-pack, considering that we already had a Blacklight Eddie Munson pop, and I thought that that was good enough. They basically took the exact same colorway of the original Blacklight Eddie pop and added it to the molding that was the original Target exclusive. But at least with the two-pack, this is the first time that we are seeing the Blacklight moldings as terms to this version of Robin and Steve, and I wouldn't be surprised if they make more Blacklight versions of these characters in the different moldings, but I do appreciate the colorways of both Robin and Steve in this Blacklight 2 pack. Next up is the Pop and Tea bundle of the Retro Princess Leia. When I first seen the official, like, leak of this and it was on a shelf at a target i thought oh it looks like it's just a metallic version of princess leia and then i had to zoom in on the photo and realize oh no this is just the continuation of that really awesome retro comic book sketching pops that they've done for the star wars lineup like example they've done like an emperor palpatine and a darth vader and an obi-wan i believe and there's more that i can't think of off the top of my head but i really liked the design of those retro style star wars pops. Of course, the only gripe I would have is the stupid rectangular boxes they've done nowadays for the pop and tea bundles instead of those classic boxes with different shapes. Next up is the pop comic covers of Squirrel Girl for the Marvel lineup. This is something that I've definitely wanted to see for quite a while. Not specifically Squirrel Girl, but just seeing something different for 
the comic book lineup where we get different characters before getting the second, the third, the fourth, or possibly like Wolverine, the 15th comic cover of him, while we get the first cover of an obscure character like Squirrel Girl. Seeing something obscure like this makes sense for a so-called Comic-Con like Target Con. Next up is the Kong for the upcoming Godzilla and Kong the New Empire movie. This one isn't too bad. I like the design of this pop, the facial expression, but it does look very similar to a couple of the Kong pops that already exist for this lineup. I think the difference is that he's holding that like kind of axe looking weapon that he's holding in his hand. I think what would have made it a little bit higher is if maybe this pop was flocked perhaps, but it's still an all right pop, I guess. Next up is the Red Lantern Hal Jordan for the DC Comics lineup. And this is a pretty decent pop. I like the overall design. We've already had a couple of Hal Jordan pops, but not in the Red Lantern form, I believe. I know for sure we got the NFT pop of Hal Jordan before. I like the obscurity of it, and it definitely makes sense for, I guess, a common trend that Emerald City Comic Con used to have back in the day with the color of the convention being green and making a lot of green pops. It seems like this Target Con is actually focusing on the idea that a lot of the pops are going to be red because of the logo of Target. So I guess it makes sense for that case, but I do like, once again, characters we haven't really seen much in pop form. Next up is the last Ronin pop comic covers from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now this is a pop a lot of people knew about because this was the very first one that got leaked near the end of 2023. And this is a pretty decent way of doing a comic cover instead of Marvel or DC. However, I feel like unless you are a mega fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Ninja Turtles, I feel that you don't have to get the covers and that you can just get away with getting the previews exclusive pop that they already released. But it's still cool that they made the comic book version though. Next up is the Edge and Kane 2-pack for the WWE lineup. Now I have a major love-hate relationship with this 2-pack. I love it because it's wrestling. I love wrestling. I wrestle outside of making YouTube videos and I've been a wrestling fan since I was a little kid. And I love the fact that we have an Edge pop like this and I even love more that we have a cane pop like this, but it just makes no sense whatsoever to have these pops in a two-pack. If it would have been a two-pack of Edge and Christian or maybe even rated RKO with Randy Orton, this would have made sense. If this was Kane with, let's say, Undertaker or Paul Bearer, this definitely would make sense, but it doesn't make sense to have Edge and Kane in a two-pack. I know they had a feud at one point or a couple of times, but that would be the exact wrong attire for this Kane pop to execute that feud. If these were two separate pops for Target Con, I think both of them would have probably shot up pretty high up on this list near the top of it. Next up is the 10 inch Sun Goku from Naruto Shippuden. Now this is a pretty decent pop. I don't know too much about Naruto Shippuden. I have seen the original Naruto all the way through, but this is a pretty decent pop and I love the execution of the detail involved with this. And especially it's not a remake of let's say a Naruto or a Kakashi or just your regular characters that Funko likes to produce characters for. It's something that we've never really seen before. So I do enjoy when they do that for stuff like Target Con or really Comic Cons overall. Next up is the flocked Shadow and Amy two pack from Sonic the Hedgehog. These pops are wicked. I love, first of all, seeing Amy as a flocked pop considering we do have the normal one, but it's a little bit of like, you might have to get this in order to get a flocked Amy pop singularly in a way. And then you also have a flocked shadow, which I believe has not been done before. We've gotten regular ones. We've gotten one with a chow. We've even gotten recently a glow in the dark one with a supersonic two pack. So to get shadow in a flocked form is also pretty cool since I believe, like I mentioned, shadows never had a flocked pop either. So having Amy as a flocked pop and shadow as a flocked pop, I mean, really cool two pack. And coming in at the top spot, Spot, it is the Elmo on Trike from Sesame Street. This probably would be the top pop in a lot of people's ranking list for this year's Target Con. I mean, we haven't seen Sesame Street pops in God knows how long, like 2016, 2017, right around there. So it's really cool to see old licenses like Sesame Street make a return in the Funko Pop world. So it's another added attention to detail to where I love the fact that they added that. It looks pretty cool, but my only gripe, and it's a lot of people's gripe is, why do they have to make a massive box for this? Like this box is way too massive for the size that the pop actually is. At least they could have done a six inch box 
or better yet, it actually looks like it could have fit in a regular four inch pop like they did with the Deadpool on e-bike pop back in the day. So if they would have done that, that would have been like an ultimate amazing pop. But I don't know how many people, although I feel like this would sell out out of the bunch, I just feel it was unnecessary to add that big of a box to such a tiny pop. But anyways, guys, that's gonna be the end of today's video. If you enjoyed today's video of me ranking the worst of the best TargetCon exclusives for this year, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know down below what you think is the worst and the best of this year's TargetCon. And I hope to see you guys in another video on the channel. One, two, three, I'm out of here.